Hi, this is a demonstration of Fusion Pro VDB Creator 10. And at the end, we're going to show uh, Fusion Pro Producer. OK, so in Fusion Pro, there is a couple of ways to start a template. Here's one where I simply have a PDF. And I want to make a variable document out of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Fusion Pro toolbar, which is right here. We're going to click on the F button. That tells it we want to make it a Fusion Pro document. We're going to specify the data source. It's an Excel spreadsheet. And the Excel spreadsheet was in my data sub. And it's right here. We'll say next. If we scroll down and see field names on the left and data on the right, we know we got this right. We can say finish. I click the F button again, and that will bring up my steps palette. We can turn on our preview so that we can watch what's happening. And then we can start drawing the frames that we need in place. So here, I'm going to draw a text frame. We're going to put it right there for now. And inside this text frame, we're going to put in uh, we're going to put in welcome to, and then I'm going to drop in the destination field. Insert. We're going to center that. And then we'll simply use our tools for making it bold, and we'll make it uh, 26 point, and we'll make it the red that came uh, as standard. We'll say OK. And I see that that's overflowing the box. It's OK. We're going to be stretching that out in a second here. So I'll rotate that 270 degrees. Again, using the pointing tool, we'll put this in place. And then we'll stretch the box down to the edge. And there we go. Welcome to the Vegas, when it says Vegas in the database. OK, so that's one way of getting started. There's a lot more to this document that I'm going to show you. But I'm going to show you an alternate method for starting this document. And that is you can start with an InDesign. So if you have a design, an InDesign, um, as you can see here, we do. Uh, this one's more complete. It has the background, and it also has the variable boxes. Now, from within InDesign, we can have two different ways to get uh, our document started. One is that you can, if you know the field names, you can type in left bracket, left bracket, the field name in right bracket. And Fusion Pro is going to recognize that as a variable. So it automatically knows that this frame, this, this uh, text block, is a variable block. Same thing with the uh, uh, Intelligent Mail bar cloak block down here. It knows that it's variable because I have those brackets around. But I have a couple other blocks up here that I'm not going to tell it. So let's just say we're not really sure what the destination field name is. We can't remember. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to say in Fusion Pro, using the Fusion Pro t uh, palette here, that that is, in fact, a variable text frame. And this is a variable graphic frame. You see? So now we're going to say export the document. We'll give it a name, Postcard Master 2. We'll say Save. And now it's going to open this document up in Acrobat and take us through the same process it did when we clicked the F button. So we're going to specify the data source. It's an Excel spreadsheet. The first row contains the field names. Here it is here. We can say Next. And because we already know that this is set up correctly, we can say Finish. <coughs> now. We're going to turn on our preview so we can see. There's that. And we can see that on page two, I have my documents correct, my fields correct. Right here. So as I scroll through, we can do some checking. OK, so here I notice that I don't have an address, too. So we're going to go in using the pointing tool. I can either double click on this, or I can click on it once and say, edit text. We're going to select the address to field and say, 
pressed if it's empty. We'll say OK and OK, and you saw that close in. So now we have a four line and a three line, and that's working properly. Now let's get back to the front of the document. So here we have our welcome to destination. We are going to have to deal with that. So we're going to select that. Again, either double clicking on the box or clicking to edit text. We're going to go in and swipe or select the destination text. And we're going to replace that with the destination field. So right there, insert, we'll say OK. And now it says welcome to, in this case, France or Vegas. Now I also have a subdirectory full of graphics. Uh, those graphics are PDF type, and they are named the same thing as the variables that are in the destination field. So there's a Vegas.pdf and a France.pdf, et cetera. And we're going to want to drop those in. So what we're going to do is say create the rules, new rule. This one's going to be a graphic rule, right, because we're using a graphic here. And we're going to use the insert picture rule. First thing we'll do is we'll name this thing. We'll call this the picture rule. Or we could have called this the front picture rule, you know, if we're going to have multiple pictures. Uh, or, you know, however you want to name it. Now, we're going to choose the field that contains the graphic name. And that field is the destination field. We're also going to use the uh, PDF as a graphic type. And as you can see, we can use JPEG and TIFF and PNG and, you know, GIF and EPS. But we're using PDFs here. And the path is C colon backslash, F-P-I-M-A-G-E-S, backslash. And just in case we can't find a graphic by the name of whatever's in that field, we're going to use a default as speech.jpg. Like so. So OK and OK. And now using the pointing tool, once again, we'll select this graphic block and say we're going to use the front picture rule. So it says France. It's showing the Eiffel Tower. There's Cancun Beach scene, San Diego, and so forth. Now, there may come a time where you want to have something different. For example, this says welcome to Vegas. And maybe I'd really like to have that say Las Vegas, but you don't want to edit the data. So we'd like to create a little rule to help us with that. So we're going to create rules, new rule, and this time we're going to use a text-based rule, and we're going to use a drag and drop wizard. We'll say next. We'll give this a name. We're going to call this the Vegas rule. And then right here, we're going to say, if the text value, we could say uppercase, lowercase, uh, you know, or whatever. But if the text value of the field, we'll expand that, destination. And here we're going to say is, we could say contains, begins with, we're going to leave that as is. And then we'll say Vegas, V-E-G-A-S. Then return. Las Vegas. Now, we're not quite done. We haven't told it how to handle any of the other variables. We're going to drag in an else return the destination, like so. OK, so if the text value destination is Vegas, then return Las Vegas, else return the destination. And you can do all kinds of things with this rule. You know, this uh, drag and drop uh, rule. Or you can change color, change font, so forth, all based on, um, you know, variables and the content of the variable. So we'll say OK and OK. Now, we have to go back in here and we have to take out this field called destination and put in the rule called Vegas rule. Say so insert, say so OK. And we'll give this a few seconds to refresh. 
right there. And now it says, welcome to Las Vegas. Now let's go to the back of this document. We're going to want to put a QR code in here on the back. So that's very simple to do using the rule system, create rules, new rule. We'll slide down. You can see there's a lot of different uh, barcode rules, the intelligent mail barcode rule, the um, BAN 13, 9 of 3, 3 of 9, and so forth. But we're going to use the QR barcode rule. And all we need to do is tell it where we're getting the information. So we're going to get that from the Perl field. And we really don't need to do anything else other than place the grid, place the uh, the barcode. So we're going to use our text box. And then inside of the text box, we're going to use the pointing tool. Right there. We'll say edit the text. Then we're going to insert the QR barcode rule that we just created and say OK. And we'll give that a few seconds to refresh. And there we have it. So now uh, we've got our design done. We can go ahead and save our work. And it's time now to produce the output. Now, you have a lot of options here when it comes to producing output. We're going to say compose. You could just let this go as is, you know, as, and, and for an output language, we support PostScript and PDF and, you know, several others, as you can see. Most of the major uh, RIP manufacturers, we have an output language that's native to their system. So, for example, if you have a firing front end, we would use PPML. Or you could still use PDF or PostScript but we do support their caching languages. For the input, we're going to do all of our records versus a subset. Um, one thing that we do want to consider, though, is do we want to do an imposition? So let's go ahead and create an imposition. We're going to cancel this screen and start up our Fusion Pro Imposer product. This comes with the application. We're going to say load. We're going to point to the document that we're working on, the Postcard Master. It now knows that it's six by four and a quarter. It also knows that there's two pages per record. That's a front and a back. For my press sheet, I'm going to use crop marks, and I'm going to use a large sheet. And here we're going to do duplex perfected. I have a lot of different layouts, but we're going to stick with this one. Now, if I had a database that needed to be in, in, uh, kept in order, we would use stack frame. We don't have that scenario, so we're simply going to say horizontal and vertical. And I'm going to rotate my document 90 degrees and then do a 3 by 3, just like that. We'll say close. Yes, we want to save that to that name. And then when we go back to compose, we're going to go right back to the imposition tab and tell it that we want to use the imposition that we just created. And now we can say Compose. <clears throat> and as you can see, it's going to count up and go through and create this document you know, using uh, the imposition that we have and using all the records that we fed it, which are only about 58 records. So we'll say View as PDF. And now we can view our output just to make sure everything is OK. And as we go down. You know, we can see that when it's calling for uh, Las Vegas or Vegas, it's saying Las Vegas, right? Putting the Vegas picture in, San Diego picture, Miami picture, and there's our QR barcode, our intelligent mail barcode, our three and four line addresses. So everything worked as expected. Now, the Fusion Pro Creator product is a great product for lower volumes. If you're doing, you know, consistent runs of 5,000 or less or something there, thereabouts. Or once in a while you're doing longer runs, uh, you know, that's fine. But if you're getting into, you know, where you're doing uh, 50,000 record runs pretty consistently or 100,000 or, you know, much more, 
we have a different product that would be more appropriate. And that product is called Fusion Pro Producer, which I'll show you now. We're going to cancel this one out. Okay, and the document that we're going to use for that is the high volume letter. So this letter, I have 30,000 records. We'll turn our preview on so we can see. So as you can see here, I have about 30,000 records. Now just from a timing point of view, uh, we're going to go ahead and say compose, and we're only going to do a handful of records just so you get a feel for the speed of the desktop with this document. Now in this document, I have a, a, you know, a name and address block, and I have a, a variable uh, paragraph down the bottom. So that's really all there is to it. So we're going to say compose. On the input, we're going to go from record one, we'll just say 50, and we'll say compose. As we watch that go, there's 10, 20, 30, 40, and then 50. Okay? So, you know, fairly fast. But if, again, if we're doing 30,000 or 50,000 or 100,000 records, that wouldn't be that fast. You'd be waiting a while. So what we're going to do is we're going to say compose. And down here we're going to say we're going to use the Fusion Pro producer product. We're going to go into the RICO 901Q. Now, these are simply Q names. The Qs are attached to a, a, a hot folder on your RIP. So, you know, if you had... Uh, several RICO boxes. You might have, you know, 901 or 9110, you know, number one, two, three, et cetera. Again, a queue is simply attached to a hot folder within the rip of your machine. We're also going to email uh, the status of this job once we get done. So now we say compose. Now what has to happen is we collect up this job, meaning you know, it's much like doing a, uh, a package in InDesign. We send it over to the server. Now, the server is going to take a couple of seconds for it to get uh, started. Um, and we did, uh, we missed one step. So this is going to rip through once it gets started very, very quickly. We're going to go back and we're going to change uh, this job to where we're doing all the records versus just 100 records. As you'll see, this is going to go clean on through to 100%. So we're going to say compose one more time, and this time we're going to say all the records, so we hit all of them, and we'll say compose, and it'll send it over to the server. Now every 1% is going to be 300 records. So there's 300, there's 600, there's 900. So you get a sense that you know, this is much, much faster than the desktop, and I'm running that server on a laptop, so if you put that on real server hardware, you'll find an uh, even bigger increase than what I'm seeing here at the desktop level. Once this gets done, it's going to shoot me an email and let me know that it's done with the status of the job. If there are any errors, it would tell me that, and uh, we would be uh, in production. Okay, that concludes the demonstration. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day.